Hello there, this is a trigonometry video on the sine rule for sides. The sine rule is based uh, on the idea that each angle of a triangle is closely related to its opposite side. So here we have a triangle, we have a point A, and opposite that we always name the side lowercase a. So the angles are named with uppercase letters, and the opposite sides are named with lowercase letters. So opposite the angle B will be a lowercase b indicating that right hand side. Opposite side of the triangle to angle C is a lowercase c. And if you think about it, if, a, if the side A was longer, the angle A would be bigger. If, for example, the side C was shorter, the angle at C, capital C, would be smaller. So sides and opposite angles are very closely related. The largest side of a triangle is always opposite the largest angle, and the smallest side is opposite the smallest angle. So that's the, uh, that's the basis for the sine rule. For any triangle ABC, this is it. A side A over the sine of its angle equals the side B over the sine of its opposite angle and also the side C uh, over the sine of its opposite angle. So I guess if we drew that here, if we had the ratio of this side over the sine of this angle, that would equal the ratio of this side over the sine of its angle and this side over the sine of that angle. Okay, now that's the full sine rule. We only ever really use the first two sections in our working. That's usually the amount of information that we're working with, just the first two sections. And we have on the top, let's reiterate, this, we have sides, the side A and the side B there on the top for this particular version of the sine rule. And on the bottom we have the angles and we have a sine next to each of them as well, the sine ratio. So that's how uh, things are put on the, uh, in the sine ratio arrangement. Let's have a look at uh, an example here. This question asks us to find the value of P to one decimal place we have some sides and angles uh, there, N, P and R. You'll notice the lowercase p over here is opposite the uppercase angle P. Okay, so here's our sine rule and we'll go through a few steps here. To use the sine rule we need two pairs of sides and angles that are related to each other with only one of them being the missing one. So with only one missing side or angle of the four items we've got, we need four bits of information, one of them can be missing, and we'll find that fourth bit of information. Let's have a look on this triangle and see what's happening. So that side P, that's a missing side, but we're working with it in this question, is directly opposite uh, the capital P angle, 74 degrees, so they're closely related. Uh, that side there, 12 centimetres, we've been given, and it's closely related to its opposite angle as well, or the sine of its opposite angles, to be totally correct. So you can see we have two pairs of sides and angles, and only one missing one. That P is the only one missing. We have three out of the four things. Uh, and if they're opposite each other, we should be able to work with our sine rule. That's the sort of the conditions for the sine rule. But I'll show you a slight variation of that later in the video as well. Okay, let's see the steps here. Uh, so we've just written that underneath. We're going to put to the numbers from this particular question in the arrangement uh, for the sine rule. So step one is that we always put the missing thing, the missing letter in this case, so the missing side, uh, on the top left. That's a great start. So we'll put P up the top left. That's always a very good place to begin. Uh, then we put that over the sine of its matching angle. Now the, the, the angle that's matching or re closely related to P is the capital P. So that 74 is going to go underneath the P, sine 74. Every angle has to have a sine next to it for this whole arrangement. So we've uh, had a look at these two here, they're matching. 
we've put the side on the top and the sine of the angle underneath. Then we have the other side on top. Can you see the other side is a 12? So we'll put a 12 up the top over the sine of the other angle we haven't used yet, which is 63. So on that right-hand side of, the, uh, of our substituted formula here, we, ha we are dealing with this side and the sine of its related angle. You'll get the hang of this, I'm sure. We then multiply now to solve... Uh, this question to find the value of p, we need to get the the p uh, pronumeral on its own. Now, can you can see that uh, to achieve that, we'll need to move this sine 74 degrees because it's on the bottom of a fraction here. That we consider that sine 74 degrees to be dividing into the top. So to move it, we need to do the opposite. So we'll be doing some multiplying to uh, to move that sine 74 so we can get the letter on its own. So we'll multiply the left-hand side by sine 74 and the right-hand side by sine 74. Notice when I did it on the right-hand side, I'm really putting it on the top there. That's important. Now on the left-hand side, we'll see a dividing sine 74 and a multiplying sine 74 cancel each other out. And that's a great thing because we wanted to have the letter on its own. We wanted to find P in the end, so we wanted to isolate that. On the right hand side we have a whole section that we will be just calculating. So our next step is to uh, is to calculate that out. So once we've cancelled out this section here, we're left with P on its own and the right hand side is just what, what happens when we multiply it by sine 74 as well. So we'll just use that to uh, put straight into our calculator and we will get 12.9. Now let's have a look for units. Yep, we were working with centimeters in the triangle, so it'll be 12.9 centimeters, and it and that was rounded off to one decimal place, like we were asked to do. Uh, I always like to have students have a bit of a look at what you expect for your answer here, because the opposite sides are related very closely to their opposite angles. Can you see that uh, we can almost think of 12 centimeters being produced by an angle of 63 degrees? So we'll expect um, a side that is produced from an angle of 74 degrees to be a little bit larger than 12 centimeters. So a larger side, uh, sorry, a larger angle should produce a larger opposite side. So uh, rather than 12 centimeters, I was expecting in this question for P to be a little bit larger than 12 centimeters and we we got that result, didn't we? 12.9 centimetres. It's always good to have a bit of an idea of what answer you're expecting because then you can pick up sometimes if you've made a silly error or something like that. If you get an angle at, uh, or a side that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so there's a lot of steps there. We'll see another example uh, as we go through the, the video. But we're really just uh, taking our sign rule at the top here, putting the missing letter on the top left, and then filling in, substituting uh, the right things in the right places from our triangle. Sometimes, unfortunately for students, sometimes the question requires us to sketch the triangle first. We'll be just given a whole bunch of information like this one here, um, and we'll have to process that into a diagram first. So let's see how we do that. So there's our information. We have a triangle ABC, that'll be the corners, and we have various angles given to us and one of the sides given to us, and we have to find one of the other sides. So let's see how we piece that together. Step one, before we even start, well it's actually not step one, it's before step one, let's draw a careful diagram because that's going to be the basis of our working out. Okay, let's process this. We have an angle A of 47 degrees, so we don't have to get this totally precise. You know it's an acute angle, so you can draw any sort of acute angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're not measuring the size of the sides or anything like that. So let's put uh, that as A and let's make it 47 degrees. Sounds good. So we've ticked that bit off there. Next one is an angle B of 56 degrees. So let's make either of those uh, corners B. Let's make it the left-hand one. And let's put a 56 degrees in there. Now, uh, we also have angle C because uh, it was triangle ABC over here, wasn't it? Okay, so we've got ABC and we've got the angles in the right spots. We need to place um, this bit over here B over here, 9.2 centimeters. Now, lowercase b, I think you'll remember from earlier in the video, should be opposite uppercase b's angle. 
So that's going to go over here. That's where we're going to place that because of that convention of the lowercase lettering being opposite on the opposite side of the triangle from the uh, uppercase angle. So 9.2 there. Okay. Uh, let's see what we're trying to find out in this question. We need to find out the value of lowercase a. Now lowercase a, can you see where that should go? Uh, it should be opposite, on the opposite side of the triangle from uppercase a angle. There's uppercase a angle. So across there, that'll be where we put the lowercase a that we're trying to find out in the question. Okay, so it's important to uh, think of uh, where we position all these things. So let's go through the steps now. We've constructed our triangle carefully, or sketched it anyway. Okay, here's our sign rule. Step one is to put the missing letter on the top left. We're trying to find A. Now can you see what uh, angle matches A? It'll be 47. So along with the sign, we'll have sign 47. And then the next step is the other side on the top right. The other side we had was 9.2 centimeters. Now uh, then we need to put that over the sign of the other angle. So that one is closely related to the angle at 56. So we'll put that in there, sign 56. So we're just piecing it together according to these steps here. Now, we need to get the letter on its own. So I think you can see that we might need to multiply by a sign 47 on both sides. That will cancel out on that left-hand side, leaving us with just A on its own. And we'll write that out there. And then we'll stick that straight into our calculator and get an answer. Now before I click on uh, and reveal the answer here, let's have a look at see what we're expecting. The angle of 56 produced an opposite side of 9.2. So the angle of 47, can you see that that should be a little bit shorter than that? So we're expecting an answer a little bit smaller than 9.2. Let's see if that works out on our calculator. Yep, 8.1 and that's rounded to one decimal place. So that um, kind of makes a bit of sense. It's pretty much what we're expecting if we're comparing the sizes of angles and the sides, the opposite sides they produce. Okay, now I'm calling this one in a cheeky way the sign rule for sides in disguise. It sounds like a rap line or something there. It's got a bit of a rhyme to it. So this one doesn't look like a sign rule at first, but we can make it into one. Let's have a look. We uh, remember we said something about this before. To use the sign rule, we need two pairs of sides and angles. They kind of need to be opposite each other and related with only one missing side or angle of the four items. That's just the conditions for sign rule, really. Now have a look at this question down here. This looks like it's got a bit of a problem because to use sign rule, uh, we're going to try and find W here. To use sign rule, we need to have that and its related angle so we need to put that over sine of this angle, which we don't have at the moment, uh, equal to this side over the sine of that angle. So those two are related and those two are related, but we have a bit of a problem. We don't know the size of that angle. But those of you who are keen, keen with your vision here can spot that we have two out of the three uh, angles of the triangle. And I think you can know from previous geometry experience, that we do know the angle sum of a triangle. So we can use that angle sum equals 180 to find a missing angle if we have two out of the three angles already. So that'll be handy. If we can find this one down here, we can then use that to find our W. We'll have the, um, I guess, the fourth of our pieces of information we need to use the sign rule here. So when it doesn't look like you um, can use the sign rule, have a think about angle sum of a triangle. It might get you out of trouble. So for the angle sum, we'll do 180 degrees from the rule, minus one of the angles, doesn't matter which, uh, 48, minus the other angle, 61, to see what's left here, and we've got 71 degrees from that. So we're using that angle sum rule, and so we can put that 71 degrees in the right spot there, and away we go. We've got uh, enough information here. You can see we've got the side, and we can take the sine of its opposite angle and another side and the sine of its opposite angle. We've got enough here to, uh, now we've got enough information to use the sine rule. So it's worth having a look there uh, when it looks like, you know, when you want to use the sine rule, um, see if you can help by finding an extra angle there. It might come in handy. So we'll just do the question normally now. We've got all the information we need. We'll put the missing letter on top, which in this case is a W. Uh, over the sine of its matching angle 
uh, equaling another side, the other side on the top, over the sine of its matching angle. We'll do the stuff that we did in the previous examples. I'll go a bit quicker here. We'll multiply by sine 71 to get the letter on its own, because the left-hand side will cancel out there and divide by sine 71 and multiply by sine 71. And then we'll just be able to put that into our calculator. Let's have a quick look and see what we're expecting for our answer to see if we're on track. 48 degrees has produced 15 kilometers, so 71 degrees should produce something a little bit bigger, a fair bit bigger in this case probably. So maybe, I don't know, 19, 21, 21, something like that. And we've got 19, yep, yeah, 19.08 kilometers, and just because I felt like it, I rounded that to two decimal places. When the question doesn't tell you how to round things, you can just choose for yourself. It's polite to put uh, what you've done in brackets for the marker. Okay, so that one's a weird one. It's in disguise. It's still a sign rule question in the end, but we just had to find a missing angle to make it work properly there. Alrighty, I think we're recapping now. The uh, sign rule for sides, or the part that we use most often, A over sine A, side B over sine of angle B, and that's based on the the uh, convention that says the sides that are opposite angles are lowercase of the same letter. So that's partly how we might uh, use our um, setting up skills here. And opposite uh, angle C is lowercase c on the side there. So you can trust that anytime you've got letters in triangles, the lowercase version should be on the opposite side of the angles. Okay, we uh, these are this is the conditions for sine rule here. We need two pairs of sides and angles. We're allowed to have one of them missing um, because that's probably the one we're trying to find. Uh, if we haven't got that, we might have to uh, do a bit of thinking. Sometimes we have to draw a tr careful diagram if they didn't give it to us, and we'll have to piece that together one at a time. Go slowly on that. It's easy to get it uh, too rushed. And then we'll go through all those steps. Uh, we've seen three examples already, so um, just watch the video again if you haven't got those steps under control now. Uh, you only need a few of these to practice, and you'll have it down pretty right. Uh, as I said, if you haven't, don't seem to have enough information for the sign rule, don't forget that's a little bit of a backstop here, a little bit of a plan B. We can sometimes use the angle sum of a triangle equaling 180 degrees to find an extra angle to make the sign rule work. That's when we've got two out of the three angles given to us. Hope that helps. Quite a bit of a story on the sign rule, but if you set it out nicely, uh, particularly with the uh, the formula for the sign rule up the top, and then trying to have the second line where you sub in all the numbers from the uh, from the triangle itself, from the, the actual question you're doing, you should have some success. Hope that helps. Watch the video again if you need to. But that's uh, finding sides using the sign rule. And of course, for all your video needs in mathematics uh, instructions, peterblakemaths.com has got plenty of help for you. I hope, uh, hope you like that. Uh, all the best with your studies. See you next time. Bye.